Hey guys, it's Grace with Truth Be Told with Grace. Guess what? The moment you've all been waiting for. It's the smear campaign. Oh, and it's a nasty one. He said some really, really bad stuff about me. And then his flying monkey continued it on and just added to it and it just got huge. Okay. So let's just recap really quickly. Um, the smear campaign is a result of him finding out that I was talking to this other girl who he was using, we're going to call her Melissa, our assertive non-clingy girl, that he was using to try and make me jealous. And while he was with her, they went on a little vacation, he was texting me, telling me he was fantasizing about me and and then also bad-mouthing her. And I mean, mm, like he really stepped in it. Like he stepped in it, got it all over the bottom of his shoe, walked in the house, walked through the house, drug it on the carpet, got in the car, drove off with it. I mean, he stepped in it. So she finally outed him and was like, dude, I know. And then that was when he turned his attention towards uh, discrediting me. So that is what a smear campaign does. A smear campaign is an attempt to call into question uh, the character, integrity, um, or discredit somebody. Um, and it also is used as a distraction. So the thing is, if he can plant seeds of doubt and call my character into question and or distract Melissa away from what it was he was doing onto, is Grace a decent person? Okay, see, that way he doesn't have to actually confront the fact that he was being a toot, okay? Now, he is going to dispatch, or maybe she dispatches herself, something called a flying monkey. I have, an, I have videos on this too, by the way. So narcissistic enablers and flying monkeys are people that the narcissist has sort of um, in their corner, so to speak. Uh, and I will tell you what, and somebody else actually commented on this too, and I totally agree. Sometimes your enablers and or flying monkeys are worse to deal with and nastier than the narcissist themselves. Really. Because, you know, he just says a couple of little things here. His flying monkey, which is his older, oldest daughter, whoo, boy. <laughs> I mean, she has this whole diatribe, right? Like, I mean, it take me 20 minutes to read it off. So um, now why, why do these people do this? I know because I've been a flying monkey and an, and an enabler. So a flying monkey is an enabler that then takes it a step further and starts actually fighting the battle for the narcissist. Um, the enablers are more sort of just allowing the behavior to continue, even um, changing you know certain things about themselves or the way they do things in order to not stir the pot. Um, the prime, a prime example too is like my, my aunt, my aunts, plural, are, are enablers for my mother. They're not flying monkeys, but they're enablers. Now, I was the flying monkey because I have that personality and I would go after people. And I can remember, and that's why I'm trying to be patient with this young lady, because I remember those days of defending my mom, even though I knew what she was, it's just... It's already so difficult to have a parent that's a narcissist to then have a parent that's a pissed off narcissist. Um, it's just terrible. And even if they don't say one word to you, there's like this energy that they have. And it's terrifying. My mother had this look. It was like this. She like drew her lips like. And she just look off. And you just knew. <laughs> like life was already so hard for me that when somebody pissed my mother off, like it was an automatic, like how could you make my life worse type thing? And I would just go right after him. I wouldn't even think. And that's another thing that these flying monkeys and enablers, like they don't even care to check the facts. Like they don't even care. They just parrot so parroting is, is, you know, like a parrot, you know, it just repeats what it's heard. 
They don't think about, is this true? Is this logical? Is this real? Are there any facts to it? Is this, they just, and it just goes. And that's why they can be actually nastier than the narcissist themselves. So let's get into this. I'm going to go ahead and put his text on the screen and then um, we're going to, we're going to put hers and I want you to see the parallel. I mean, it's literally uh, some of the stuff she says is just verbatim parroting what he says. I mean, it's actually hearsay. It's not even admissible in court, but we're just going to go ahead and jump right into this. And just so you know, I'm, I'm really not going to bother going through and like trying to rebut in a, a lot of this. I mean, it's a smear campaign. And quite frankly, some of it is so out there, it's actually laughable. I mean, this girl has climbed so far out on a limb with the, some of this stuff that it's, you know, like, girl, be careful because that limb will break and drop you straight on your butt. She really shoots herself in the foot with a lot of this because it's, it's just like, it's not even believable. Like, it's so far-fetched that it's just, it becomes laughable. All right, so here's what he says. This is right after he finds out that Melissa has been talking to me and the jig is up. Oh my God, I know who you're talking about. You're talking about Grace. I freaking knew it. Melissa, you're not going to believe me, so I'm not even going to try and explain. All I'm telling you is consider the source. She goes by four different aliases. She hides behind the cloak of Jehovah. She lost her kids and has been married five times. Believe what you will. She's trouble. Just Google her then and see the men she's gotten in trouble. <sighs> Sad. All right. That's pretty bad, huh? And some of the some of the smear campaign was verbal too, so I, it just sort of got back to me, but um, this is what I have in writing. Now, all right, here we go. Let's go straight on into what the daughter says, and it's a lot, all right? So I'm just going to read straight on through, and some of it, guys, I'm, I'm probably going to cut um, out of respect for this young lady and, and the situation that she's in and what she's gone through, and also to keep some of her personal business and not cause more drama in a family that's already so unloving and unsupportive. I'm going to just skip a couple of things because I don't think she understands. No one is safe from a narcissist. No one. And, and I know a whole lot about this young lady's story. And I fact check, by the way, just so we're clear. I remember I had a conversation with one of my aunts one time and you know, she was like, well, your mom said you did this. Your mom said you did that. And we just, we know that. And I'm like, what do you think mom says about you when you're not around? Did you ever think about that? Of course, you know, whatever. Anyway, so let's just go ahead and read this and uh, we'll try to muddle through it. All right. Hi, I'm Tony's daughter. He don't even know that I'm messaging you, but I just want to tell you a couple things. I've been watching my dad go through the most unbelievable, ridiculous things over the past three years. I really like you a lot just from what he's told me about you. And I believe that you are a, that you are a down to earth, caring person. And I know you don't really know me, but if I can tell you a little bit about myself, I have an ability, thanks to PTSD, to smell abuse from a mile away. I've been through things, unfortunately, that people only see in horror movies. So with that being said, I hope that you can understand that I really see people for who they are, and I refuse to even talk to someone I think can't be trusted. One of the most truly disgusting human beings I've known lately has been this girl, Grace. Now, my dad started to catch on a little too late, but he has completely ended things with this girl a while ago. Sure about that, honey? If you would have heard the voicemails and audio messages that she has sent my dad, you would be completely put off. Everything she says sounds like a politician's speech. How she's learned the way commu people communicate, how she has learned the way to communicate to people to evoke whatever emotion she wants out of them, I have no clue. But I do know 
that she can be dangerous emotionally, mentally, and by the way she has previously showed up at his house, banging on his door. It's an hour drive for her. She could even potentially be she could even be potentially physically dangerous. She has admitted that she hates her teenage daughter and doesn't enjoy being a mom because she has autism. She doesn't celebrate her kids' birthdays. She actually only allows one day a year where she takes her kids to do something fun or spend time together. I'm sorry. Really? <laughs> um, <laughs> no holidays, no birthdays, no special occasions, which she says is her religious preference. But she also told my dad that if they were ever to be together, that he wouldn't be able to attend family gatherings. He would be he wouldn't be allowed to partake in his kids or grandkids celebrating Halloween or going trick-or-treating, and that if he wanted to wrap a birthday present or throw a birthday party for his kids or grandkids, that it would have to be where she couldn't see it or know anything about it. <laughs> it's, it's a little triggering because it's like, are you even saying this? Okay. All right. I only met her in person one time. Then how the heck you know all this? Okay. All right. I only met her in person one time and she told my uncle to his face that he wasn't very smart and didn't follow instructions. All over him trying to use some furniture moving straps that he had never used before and was trying to figure it out. I witnessed her calling my dad stupid and dumb, telling him he wasn't very handy and wasn't a man. You witnessed that, huh? Every word I have ever heard her speak personally has been abusive and manipulative. And I think the most disgusting thing about it is she presents herself as a godly woman and doesn't believe in sex before marriage because it's a sin in her eyes. It's a sin, period. All right. Uh, but has, I can't even say this with a straight face. I'm sorry. <laughs> but but has tried to sexually manipulate my dad multiple times. <laughs> Even if that was true, why would you tell your kids something like that? That's entirely inappropriate information. Okay. <sighs> All right. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> She told him nobody would want him because not being able to have sex after his stroke. She told him he wouldn't find a woman to stay with him for long enough to work through any physical disabilities. I had to sit and watch my dad gain almost a hundred pounds. And that only happened while he was dealing with her. Uh, it was the weight that was a contributing factor to the stroke. Just saying. She has, she's, this is great. You'll love this. <laughs> this is where the girl starts like really going out on the limb. I'm like, girl, please. She has said that she believes kids are supposed, I'm sorry. Wait, <clears throat> I gotta get myself under control. She has said that she believes kids are supposed to sit down and be quiet and even said that she makes her kids stay in their room quietly until they are called out by her <laughs> because the noise and mess is disrespectful to adults. Quote. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. All right, I find it funny that she tries to, that she tries to act towards you as if she's looking out for you as a woman. Remember she this is her talking to Melissa. But she has also stated that she only has male friends and she has never had a friendship with one, with one other woman in her life. Because she says that women find her intimidating and she doesn't trust women. She's not looking out for you. She only got in contact with you as a way to sabotage him moving on with somebody else. 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've been warning my dad about this woman for almost two years. Really? Because when you and I talked, we had a great conversation. All right. But as with many people that are in abusive relationships, people tend to judge and ask why they stayed for so long. It's because of the manipulation, the cat and mouse game. <clears throat> you have no obligation to take anything of what I say into consideration. But I did want you to know that she has been known to alter people's text messages, emails, etc. Never, I've never in my life, even my own abusers, met someone more manipulative and willing to go unreason to unreasonable extents to persuade people into changing their mindset. Wow, she's giving me some shout outs. All right. My dad may be selfish at times because I've witnessed him put everybody in front of him for as long as I can remember. And now he's trying to practice setting boundaries for himself. He's trying to figure out what kind of person he wants to spend the rest of his life with. He struggles with depression and self-esteem because of what he had to go through. And if you look her up and actually investigate, she has three different aliases she goes by. Literally, three, like three different names, literally. I also find it extremely wrong, knowing how manipulative she is, that she's she has spent time learning psychology, family and marriage psychology, and now, all of a sudden, just so happened to be a certified neurological massage therapist, just in time for her to try to get with my dad, who struggle, struggles with neuromuscular. Okay, we're going to go back to that. Anyway, I really think you are an amazingly genuine, open and honest person. And I hate things didn't work out for the two of you. But it pisses me off because I know this girl, Grace. And in my heart, she was selfishly trying to hurt you and spread lies about my dad. Thank you. God, she doesn't know where he lives now. But she stalked my dad's Facebook with a different account to find out whoever the new girl he was seeing was. Also, as for his marriage with my ex-stepmom, neither of you knows what happened. I was there. I lived through it. I witnessed all of it. It's completely unfair to say that he, that, woo, <laughs> sorry, excuse me. I just ate. I, I witnessed it. It's completely unfair to say that he he was the issue just because just because how he is now after the fact. On top of that, Grace has never had one conversation with his ex ever. Sure about that? And I have abs and has absolutely no idea where she, why she decided to leave because she didn't just leave him because he was an abusive narcissist. <laughs> Because she didn't just leave him because he's an abusive narcissist. See that? I'm going to skip the rest of it. She goes on to say, oh, wait, here's one more thing. She says, uh, <clears throat> that I'm the worst person that she could have gotten in contact. Let's see, she's a complete snake. And this is the reason she temporarily lost her kids because she goes after people with negative intent for her own self gratification. It's sick. Okay. Whoo, that was scathing. <laughs> okay. Ay, ay, yikes. <laughs> I'm not sure what else to say about it. I mean, it's, it's pretty. Um, the one thing I do want to go back to is this whole part about me, uh, suddenly becoming a certified neurological massage therapist. So this young lady is parroting and you can see she has no idea. She's no clue. And if it's true that we've only ever met one time, how the heck do you know how dangerous I am? How do you, I mean, how, like, how do you even know any of this? You know what I mean? 
and the weight thing that he gained a hundred pounds since since he and I've been talking, like he's been a whale the whole time. That's why he had the stroke. So it's anyway. But let's go to this sort of certified neurological ther therapist. Okay, so this is a prime example of just plain parroting. Okay, he's obviously told her this, and she's decided she's going to believe it. I will tell you, I've been a massage therapist for fifteen years. I am not a certified neurological uh, neuromuscular massage therapist. To become a certified neurological massage therapist in my state, it's a hundred hours. 100 continuing education hours through a certified school, which is big money, all right? I have taken about a fourth of that, okay? So this just really speaks to this guy's ego, that he would even begin to think that anybody would care enough to get with him, that they would go through 100 hours of continuing education classes to become a certified neuromuscular therapist and then try to get him in bed. I mean, it's stupid. It's just stupid. But that doesn't matter. The purpose of the smear campaign is not to spread factual information. It's to just throw fecal matter everywhere. It doesn't matter where. It's just got to land somewhere and start to stink. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. Now, this woman issued a diatribe. I mean, I think it took me like, what, 10 minutes to read it? Holy moly. Like, we're like way into this, okay? All right. The purpose of this video is just to show you how nasty it can get when you go up against a narcissist. Now, fortunately for me, Melissa didn't even begin to, she didn't even question this. She's like, really? She's such a smart girl. But this can like, so this can really be damaging. This can be damaging stuff, guys. Um, if you're going to go up against a narcissist, I just want to let you know how horrible it can be when the smear campaign comes your way. And, and when the flying monkeys are dispatched, I mean, they can really get horrible, all right? I don't really feel the need to go over this any further. I mean, I think we all know that it's bogus. So we're going to say goodbye to Tony the One Trick Pony. Run along now. Find yourself a new circus to join because this is not our circus and those are not our flying monkeys.